Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, it's in red, it's the ramble, that's in yellow, we go until midnight tonight here from Gabnet. Ladies and gentlemen, that woman there, that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, the, the, you, you're wearing lipstick today, it's Lori Thompson. I, I am wearing lipstick, I have like a variety of colors in Revlon's uh, color shade. And man, they, it does last a long time. But they never tell you when you're buying a color. It has these stupid names like Tempest or Ba 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 Boom, or and they doesn't tell you anything about the color. At least constantly coral, which is my shade. Constantly I mean, coral. <laughs> yes, it tells you something about the color. But there are all kinds of names that you know, midnight rendezvous. What the what does that mean? And so I I think that you could just look at a color chart without knowing. Marjorie that. doesn't wear lipstick. She doesn't. She doesn't wear lipstick no. No. And I, she's I, I think she did used to. She said, but she hasn't in years now. Yeah. You know, well, as you get I, older, you just give up and don't do anything anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Right. You, you got to prop yourself up to care. Yeah, yeah I, um, I I don't have lips, though. I have really thin lips. Reba yeah. McIntyre and I have real thin lips. Yeah. Because you, when you have them, you notice other people with thin lips. And so if I don't put some color on them, they disappear into my face. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Marjorie just, I, I can't remember any time when uh, in our relationship where she's worn lipstick. You well, know? she always looked pretty foxy when you would bring her out before you were married to California. Yeah, yeah, she, she looked fine, you know, but I, uh -huh. th I think there were certain things she didn't like to do or, you know, so I, 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 she felt she didn't need lipstick, so I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, it goes through, plus fashion goes through phases. I, you know, I look at Vogue occasionally yeah. just to see what, what everybody else is doing so that I can do it or not do it. And uh, it's you know it's they change all of a sudden you know one season is deep reds are in and then the next next season persimmon is well, wait the you, you have a red smear on your on your shirt you I no, really no 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 good no, 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 no. see see that what that you, yeah oh that says North Face oh really <laughs> yeah <laughs> I guess the, I guess the cameras aren't that good. <laughs> no, because it's funny you mentioned red, though, because I frequently get lipstick in all the weirdest places. I mean, because you put, if you put lipstick on, then you decide you're going to wear something different. You put it on, it's always a liability. All, uh, old women who wear lipstick shouldn't. And because they get it all over no, their no, face. No, they, no, they put it, then it goes into these creases. You ever notice that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, watch it now. <laughs> watch it. I could be about three years away from those creases. Well, at that I time, still, you pro probably won't use it, you know. Probably, you know, yeah. yeah. It's fun. We take, you know, a lot of vacations, we take a lot of cruises, and everybody kind of gussies up for cruises. Mm -hmm. But I am not, when I go on vacation, I don't want to gussy up for anybody. And so um, I kind of, like, first day will wear something cool and then just gauge what everybody else's sense of cool yeah. is. And then see where I want to fit in, because yeah. you just want to relax. You know, you just want to have fun. Yeah, you know, the last time we started to talk, this we were it was pre-Thanksgiving, and you were yes. talking with your now husband. I can say yeah. that. <laughs> I know a word I, I never I, thought I. I, no, I find that weird to associate with you. How's your husband? Uh, I know. It, it, believe me, it's still weird for me too. And he was going to the store to get graham crackers. Yes, and he was a little dismayed for, for, because not because he, he not, but let me say this, folks. It wasn't because he was going to drink milk. Okay, <laughs> so go ahead. He is a straight arrow, but yeah. um, no, it's uh, because he has he is like the king of cheesecakes. He makes the best cheesecake. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you about the cheesecake. 
oh man, he makes he's making a pumpkin one uh, for Thanksgiving really? because it's his season. Yeah. Oh, they're they're so dreamy. Hmm. And I'm not a big dessert person, but he's a real good baker, and so he was keyed on. He's always baking something, and he's a he's very good at it. But tomorrow we're going to some people's house, and they have requested. We did this. His, we did this the day before Thanksgiving, folks. But now it's way after Thanksgiving. So, but oh, oh so how oh, was it? How was it over there? It was great <laughs> over there. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oops. Don't you know how uh, to yep. fake this up? How was it? Uh, it was dandy. And my, that cheesecake yeah. uh, was delicious. No, he's a really good dessert maker. And I'm not much of a dessert person except when cheesecake is in there. Well, I mean, you know, you get there and makes a good cheesecake. I have somebody makes a Russian something. She's Russian. Ooh. And this Russian uh -huh. cake, it's a... It looks like a bunt cake, but it's it's got other stuff in it. And it's just... It's to die for. It's really? Just, uh, and she and oh, she's coming over. For, excuse me. She came over for Thanksgiving and brought one. <laughs> that is so super. You're just trying to make me feel better. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. and plus, it's, as your friend bought an Instapot, then that opens up a whole other world of cheesecakes. Instapots? You, you cook them in Instapots? Ricky does, and yeah, and they turn out great. They're small. They tend to be smaller, you know. You don't, you can't control the size because it's only the size of the instant yeah. pot. And so, but man, they're good. There's something about that cooking process that increases the density or brings it out. Yeah, mm. Mm. fantastic. Wow. Well, anyway, another year's passing. My n n my next birthday is coming up soon. I know what it once is. Thanksgiving is over, I know that I'm coming closer to to being closer to death. Uh, it's you know your positive outlook, Ben. It's just <laughs> it must be refreshing. December eighteenth, I will be if I live that long. Oh, caveat, caveat. Eighty-four years old. Wow, that's pretty good, man. You look great for eighty-four. I think. Well, I look at it this way: I'm I'm only going to be uh, about fifteen years younger than Jimmy Carter. So, you know. Oh, well, when Roslyn went. Yeah, I, I felt so bad about that. Yeah, because you know what? And why do I feel I, bad? She lived to be 96, mazel tov, you know? She was. But uh, with parents, and they were parents, um, at least from my point of view, when one goes and then oh, the other. I, well, by, the time we're, by the time this is on, he may be dead, you know? I yeah. mean, it's just, it's just, they were so, these were two people. I mean, they met, met each other in, I think, high school. They did, yeah, in Plains. And he, he <laughs> uh, proposed to her, and she said no. <laughs> you know? And, but he said, oh, think about it. <laughs> yeah, but, he, but, but uh, you know, so when you've had a mate that long, and she goes, you go. You know, you, your whole world is thrown. You're, yeah, you're, you're, uh, you know, to begin with, he's probably quite senile. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. But I'm sure he knows she died, and I'm sure that affects him. And then it's just going to be like, you know, he's almost a hundred. He's ninety nine. Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and at that point, you go. I don't have anything to live for. You know. Yeah. Well, Especially She's without gone. your mate, hmm? it disables your whole identity yeah. when you're mate. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, if you've been married that so. long, or you haven't worked to retain something besides that. Yeah. So I mean, it, 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 they usually go right after that if, if they dad, if they really loved each other. My mother went uh, something like forty years after my father, <laughs> so I figured that wasn't a good marriage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She got married twice and had an equally long marriage. I, I, yeah, oh, you know, there's a relationship that that your parents have to each other that you don't know about, and you won't ever understand. And you won't ever know about it. Uh, and uh, my father, I thought was a great guy. I loved him, you know. And my mother, eh, you know, I mean, I love my mother, but you know, it, it, she was too. Too hugging, and you know that's where I get my uh, 
my uh, what do you call it when you don't like enclosed places my uh, your, uh, don't tell me <laughs> autistic uh, claustrophobia. claustrophobia that's where I get my claustrophobia from she was just so you know Hmm. Well, you were her one, you know. And I was the only one, yeah. One. Yeah, I was the only yeah. one. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and we were talking about me being an only child, how wonderful that was. The bad part about it was is you had a lot of responsibility. You had to live yeah. up to all, all their expectations of you. Yeah, yeah. see, and, then, and sometimes it feels like a burn on your neck, like with the oldest child. Yeah. And my mother had overcome so much about her childhood and her station in life. That I did feel that expectation deep, 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 but I let it go too far. Well, you know, I let I'm, it. And also, parents who shame their children, yeah. stop it, stop it right now. Because what it, all it does? Yeah. yeah is, well, it, here, here's the thing: you're, you're expected maybe to, to be something in life special, you know. And uh, I, w I went into show business, but for my father, that was wonderful. Uh -huh. You know, I had yeah. comp I had done something good. Where any to yeah. any other parent, they probably want to commit suicide. <laughs> you know, always in well, he's 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 in show business. He's like a juggler. You know, I mean. <laughs> well, the uh, thing, you know, what's that thing about? Um, and give up show business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <No line. laughs> right. But well, that's what I liked radio because radio you got a weekly paycheck, and it, see, I wanted to be an actress, but I wanted to be an actor. Yeah, I thought you did, yeah. and then but needed some more stability than that. You know, being from a good Midwestern upbringing, you have to have a little stability. I mean, where I grew up, everybody owned their home. Many of them did not leave town right. to seek right. a career or employment, and uh, so you know, it was it was something I was very cognizant of, and so radio kind of put the two together. Me. Yeah, well, what happened was as I went into radio because, number one, it, it kind of came into my life through a high school radio program. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I knew I wanted to go into show business of some sort, but then I decided I want to be an actor. Yeah. But acting was a hard profession, you know. Uh, lots of rejection. Lots, I didn't of, think lo I lots of rejection and probably very little success. All right, right. Because, yeah. because of all all the people in my union, I think only two percent are working. Yeah. All right. I, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I decided that I would go into radio, which I enjoy. It. I considered it kind of show business, and yeah, I would do, I would do radio until I could get movie parts. That that I I could be so good in radio, somebody would ask me to be in a movie. And then I, yeah, I yeah. think that you know we and you could have had that man if the timing and the technology was different. Well, no, nobody nobody ever asked me to be in a movie as successful well, as I became. Yeah, well, as, but if you'd been in you Los and Angeles, I, you and I were supposed to be in a movie. We were supposed to be in Bugs Life. They really the film. Don't you remember they called us at at like ten o'clock in the morning and they said we have two characters in this film and we've created them. Based upon you and Lori, and can, I don't remember. And, and can you be out here this afternoon to Pixar to talk to us about doing the voices for these characters? Yeah. You, don't, you don't remember that? No. You, you must have been remember. drunk at the time. <laughs> uh, and I said, sure, we'll be there. Yeah, man. And uh, uh, t we'll call you later, okay? And so time passes, and they didn't call, and they didn't call. And they finally called at 1 o'clock, and they said, we had another meeting. We decided we don't want to use those characters. Wow. We could have been, man, we could have <laughs> been those animated voices that are all going to celebrities now. Yeah. yeah. Man. Oh. No, I don't, I don't remember that. I remember once that we were in a George Clooney movie, movie but you had to know we were there. Um, he, it was with Michelle Pfeiffer. It was called One Fine Day. Yep. And yep. the character wakes up, and they were they had us on the radio. Well, if people want to really hear us, here's what I suggest: yeah. if you have um, surround sound, yeah, kill the front speakers. Okay. And then you'll hear nothing but us in the back. <laughs> <laughs> it missed the show that day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're in luck. They came to me and they said, "Do you mind if we we'd like to use your show as a you know a, a George Clooney's going to be waking up in the morning listening to the radio." And we want you on, you guys on the radio. And I said, oh, sure, fine. How much? Yep. And they said, oh, no, yep. we're not paying anything. 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. And that I said, part. "Go ahead, do it anyway." You know. Yeah, it'd be fun. It'd just yeah. be fun. And if everybody goes to watch, one, you ever see one fine day with George Clooney, and Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, uh, the scene where he wakes up in the morning, the clock radio goes off, and it's me talking to Lori. Oh wow, fun, fun! I don't think I've ever seen. Um, so. Oh really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, mentions yeah we could get on imdb <laughs> and you know as voices you can barely hear in george clooney movie let me, but let, I me see, let me see if i can find that clip and send it to you oh that'd be fun that'd yeah. be fun yeah because yeah, i was doing more tv before i got to san francisco and i thought maybe i'd like to be an anchor because things were starting to go well in st louis um but i just hated the weather in st louis and so when I got the San Francisco radio offer, you know, I that that became it was a major market, and it was started to be so much fun. But you had a great vo- I, you had a great voice for radio. I mean, you did, you had good looks for TV too, but you really looked you sounded great on radio. You know? Well, thank you. I I loved radio because it's magic. In radio, everyone who's listening gets their own red wagon. When I say red wagon radio everybody gets their own red wagon on tv you show a red wagon that's going to have to go to five hundred thousand. well it, 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 it it's uh, you know i said i often said to people the reason i loved radio it was i said it was the greatest visual medium we have because it, people get to make their own well visions. because you can create the vision yeah They're, right uh, nobody knew what i looked like for a long time in fact i never allowed my picture to be taken in san francisco or or turn my back to the camera or whatever uh, because I didn't want people to see what I look like. And the reason Uh I didn't want that was that I felt that the magic was that people in their minds could imagine what I look like. I think that's valid, yeah. Because I remember the most shocking thing that happened to me when I was a kid, I loved my radio. I loved listening to radio. I mean, I've had a love affair with radio all my life. TV, not so much. Radio, absolutely. And I grew up on the radio. And I would have radio programs that I would listen to. And uh, and, and and then I would suddenly, I would see a picture, a photograph of the guy who was the host of the show. And I go, he doesn't, doesn't look like the guy like he sounds like. Right. Yeah, I couldn't imagine a- that voice coming out of that guy. Because you'd already created an image exactly. in your head. Even exactly. And that was the beauty of radio, was that, you yeah. know, you didn't, you know, in most cases you didn't know what they looked like. You knew what Jack Benny looked like because he also made movies. You yeah. Know. But, you know, with shows in San Francisco where there was a guy who was an announcer who told stories or whatever, you just imagine what he looked like. And then when you see a picture of him and you don't hear him talking, you can't imagine that voice coming out of that guy. Yeah, it just because it's a complete, oftentimes it's a complete non sequitur. Yeah. And speaking of the magic of radio, there's a movie I think you might like called All the Light You Cannot See. Yeah, I already saw it. Isn't it great? I thought it was terrific. I, mean, I did too because it, it's just, it captures it, that magic. It got a very and low the, rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And I, I said to Marjorie, I said, this is one of the better pictures I've seen in recent times. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think it's, it's actually a mini series, right? They're yeah. four installments yeah. or something. I loved it. I mean, every night. Uh, so, yeah, I would recommend yeah, that. No, to I, people. And she was terrific, the blind girl. Uh-huh. She's actually yeah. blind, you know. I wondered about yeah, she's that. She's actually you know. blind. Yeah. yeah. So that, that kept uh, the politically correct people off the, their backs. And have you noticed that this uh, Israeli Palestinian. I should, conflict, I should say, this recent Hamas thing. It's getting actors and actresses fired if they come out with the wrong sentence. Yeah, that's wrong because you know there are two okay. opi- there are two opinions to be had here, and I yeah. don't know if you remember, but even back when we knew each other, I, I was what is that? There's some kind of sound coming through. I, I guess it's. Oh, that's my neighbor. He's playing Bob the Handyman. Oh. Okay. Is that it? Can you hear it loud? It's going. It comes now. and goes. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was it? Oh yeah, that I, I I read about these people who have an opinion, and and my opinion for years was I was always pro Palestinian. Oh yeah, you and, and, and people say, well, but you're Jewish. How about your homeland? I said, well, to begin with, 
I'm I'm not an Israeli. I'm not right. a Zionist. I am a Jewish American. Okay, Amer- American happens to be Jewish. Yes. Uh, and I n- never liked the idea of Israel because I knew that one day something would happen and Israel as a political entity would make some kind of colossal mistake and then people would say to me, how do you feel about what your people are doing to blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, the day right. ha- and the day has come, you know, where people go, well, how do you feel about your, your homeland, your people? And I'm going, I, they're not my people. These, they're Zionists, they're Israelis, and they happen to be Jews. Right, and I think it's being done by people in, in entertainment. They've been taking a stand yeah. because their career was lacking. I know Amy Schumer took a lot of heat because she was really so uh, just angry about it. I mean, she took a platform and then... Was, it, was, she, was, she, pro, was she pro-Israel on that one? I imagine she's she would. She's pro-Israel. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it just... Uh, it isn't a matter of being pro-Israel. Uh, like, nobody's pro-Hamas. Forget that, you know. <laughs> no. That's no. like saying I'm pro-Nazi, okay? You know, the, yeah. you can't say you're pro-Hamas. Uh, but you right. have to separate Hamas from the uh, the people and mm-hmm. you know it's funny I have a guy in my show calls me and he he's very much for the Israelis in this fight and he uh-huh. goes well you know all those people in in Gaza they let the uh, Hamas run that country and uh, you know I kept saying well it's been they allowed them to do it in 2012 I think it was and they just never let go of their power and they said well yeah well they don't do anything about it you know, and, and he blamed them that way. And I would, afterwards, I thought about it and I said, thought to myself, what about all those Jews in concentration camps? I imagine there were more Jews in the concentration camps than there were guards. Why didn't yeah. they turn around and fight them? Because in those situations, you are being oppressed. Okay? And you, your you, spirits, you care about your, care about your life, the life of your family, all of that, so you just don't make trouble, and I way. I understand it, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, the only time there was ever an uprising in any of the ghettos was in the Warsaw ghetto, where they had an uprising. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that uh, that was all, the only one I can remember, you know. I mean, they they that. got they got on these trains and they passively went to these concentration camps, you know. We, so we, it's whatever lie is being perpetrated in that in the confines of that uh, situation, you know, it's, it, but I, I, I've always felt sorry for the Palestinians because they need to be recognized and have a homeland. And right. they're, because their homeland was taken away from them in, in 1948 by the uh, United Nations. And by the way, where is the United Nations right now in all of this, okay? Want, they, they created yeah. the situation, they should be out solving it, you know? Right. Well, because my friend in high school who was Palestinian, yeah. she had to leave because her house was taken. Her house was taken and occupied yeah. by Israeli interests. Yeah. So she looks at the whole thing very differently. We, you know, and well, they they go, oh, these Palestinians, they hate the Jews. Well, they hate Israel. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I hate, that's I it. hate saying hate Jews because you know anyway. Uh, they hate they hate uh, Israelis and they hate well they hate Jews too by yeah and, by and she was of, uh, I viewed it kind of through that prism of her friendship yeah. because she is but one wouldn't of those you people. wouldn't you be pissed off at them if you you were thrown out of your home and had to move into yeah the de- had to move into the desert you know yeah so well, see and that, yeah. when we were friends I was in seventh grade. So I, my awareness of the, you know, the global political environment was really limited, yeah. and it was like I can't believe they threw you out of their home, your home. What you just went home and other people were living there, and she explained it to me. But it's been so many years ago, I can't remember yeah. the yeah. details. So I mean, there are two sides to this, and I think that the the Palestinians uh, have been given a lousy deal. You know, I do. I think they have been misrepresented by Western yeah, media. I mean, I'm not saying that <laughs> Israel doesn't have a right to exist at this point. It's been too long, and they're there. You can't suddenly say they shouldn't be there any longer. But right. but I think that we have to say, what do we do for the Palestinians? What do we do to make them feel that they have something? 
you a know, voice. A vo- and yeah. a voice. And they are minimized in, in the eyes of the world. And that, you know, the United States comes up and they, oh, uh, uh, Israel's the hero in this thing. Well, no, Israel was the victim and a very terrible victim of a very terrible thing that happened by this horrible organization called Hamas. But Hamas are not the Palestinian people, just like Israel isn't the Jewish people. Okay. Right, exactly. Well put. And the thing too that, that she mentioned is if you were and they and she has relatives mm-hmm. living who are Palestinian in Gaza. And so she said if you um, basically um, if you are a Palestinian, you view what's going on right now there as kind of an apartheid. I mean, they have trouble getting housing, lots of difficulties in, in acceptance. It's like when I first found out that at the turn of the 19th century, um, there were signs saying no blacks, no... Well, uh, 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 we're running over, but to hell with it. I, okay. liked, I like this discussion. The fact is that, that the Palestinians are so forgotten that even people who should care about them really don't. The Saudis don't care about them. You right. know, uh, uh, all they care about them is that, well, uh, look what the Jews are doing. Yeah, the Jews again. It's not the Jews. <laughs> right. But you got to remember, Israel is a Zionist state. It is formed on, under, the the, the, under Zionist theory, which was written and codified by Theodore Herzl years ago about the Jewish homeland. Which, you see, my argument was we shouldn't have a Jewish homeland. And people would go, well, why don't you think the Jews should have had a homeland? And I said, look what happened once before when they knew where we all were. <laughs> really, I'm serious. I mean, they knew where we were, and they got us, and they rounded us up, and they sent us off to concentration camps, and they killed us. Well, yeah. you know, I believe, as my, uh, my father-in-law, who was the head of the Jewish Socialist Bund, which was the other group that opposed the Zionists, they they believed in the diaspora. And the diaspora was going out all over the world, populating the world, and wherever you go, take your culture with you. See, that's so pure and wonderful. I love, I remember, I remember we used to talk about the Bundists, which I had never heard of before you were telling me about them. And I thought that's such a pragmatic approach. Well, the the truth of the matter was in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, what do you call it? In the uh, uh, ghetto, in the Warsaw ghetto, when they had an uprising I talked about. Yeah. um, The, the Israelis would like you to think it was the Zionists, but it wasn't. It was the Jewish socialist Bundes who were fighting the Nazis Uh-oh. in the Warsaw Ghetto. Okay. And they so, always were at polar opposites of each other. When my when my father-in-law, after the war, went to Israel, he couldn't be run for something because he was a Bundes, not a Zionist. No, see, that's... If he had decided, I'll be a Zionist, he would have been probably the first prime minister of Israel. Wow. Yeah, but yeah. he wound up coming to the United States and, you know. Yeah, that is that is a very indication of an unhealthy bias, if nothing else. Yeah. Against, against yeah. us. Well, uh, believe me, Israel has had their biases over the years. And uh-huh. somebody, somebody has referred to Israel as an apartheid nation. That's what I, yeah, that's, what I was trying to uh, yeah. express that their point of view, the Palestinian yeah. point of view, is yeah. they feel they are the victims of apartheid. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's, it's you know, but you have two sides here, and and one side has never been listened to, never been mm-hmm. a, 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 a you know they haven't made you need a two state solution, and you need to have the the Palestinians feel they have a stake. This was their country at one point. It no longer is. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do to keep them happy? Yeah. A a bilateral solution. God damn it. We we run out of time. So run out of time that we're running over here. Well, we we best. But but getting getting back to the final thing of what we were saying, I'm a little sick of everybody getting in trouble because they post a post one way or the other. Yeah, it's an opinion. 
It's an opinion, and I think having a pro-Palestinian opinion is not a, uh, an, uh, to begin with, it is not um, uh, anti-Semitic. Uh, no. Uh, because, uh, believe me, I know what anti-Semitism is. I've lived it, okay? I grew up in an all-Italian neighborhood where I was known in some circles as that dirty Jew. You yeah. Know? But I never let it affect me. I never let me, it never formed my opinion about Italians, <laughs> you know. Uh, I, just, yeah. I just realized that this is what exists in this world, and, and there are hateful people. That's it, you know. We and that, and to, that I'm, I'm not one of those hateful people, and I will never allow myself to become one of them. And I think what Netanyahu has done is probably create more anti-Semitism in this world in a couple of weeks than anybody I can think of. Yeah, I can't remember a Middle East situation that has been so polarizing in yeah. my lifetime ever. Well, also, yeah. if people are anti-Semitic, they now feel they're being given permission, a sense of permission yeah, to that's become true. even <laughs> more anti-Semitic. Hey, yeah, listen, kiddo, I love talking to you. Uh, we we should I, just, I, I think we just should just turn this into our own show. You know, we should, you know, yeah, and, and do it once a week and talk to each other for an hour. Maybe bring you know, somebody like Chuck Farnham in to join us, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I'd that. be totally game. I, I, I love in, in the next couple of weeks, we'll arrange for this whole thing because I'm getting a little tired of doing a show every single night, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I will see. You can count on me. Ladies and, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is the lovely <laughs> and attractive. Lori Thompson. Thanks, Lori. Thank you, doll. Bye-bye, dear. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Uh, good to see you. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, Wednesday, and uh, we start our week of uh, uh, ramble programs. Uh, and um, I hope you are enjoying your you enjoyed your Thanksgiving and had a good one. And um, anyway, uh, but, but, but I'm trying to see. Do my I, 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 I just want to do one thing here. You know what happens is when I come in here on a uh, on a um, uh, what do you call it a uh, <laughs> on a, uh, a right after a vacation or a bunch of days off. There are always some little things that I want to like, you know, uh, fix and work on and make sure they're all tweaked and so on. And here I just seem to, I seem to, it looks like I'm kind of like a, a little, little problem here with the picture. But anyway, so where are we? Oh yeah, you know what? Uh, uh, we have major death tonight. Uh, that was announced. Uh, 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 Henry Kissinger is dead. Henry Kissinger, who was the Secretary of State and probably formed um, our foreign policy for the rest of the century, at least, if not into this century, um, got a, a speaking relationship going with China and all kinds of things like that, and was also a terrible person as well in his uh, policies that he helped uh, a guy by the name of um, of uh, Richard Nixon to pull off, but uh, in any event, he's dead. And uh, to show you that only the good die young, he died at a hundred. Okay, uh, and uh, lived an, a big long life. And did you see? Uh, of course, you know we we lost Rosalind Carter, uh, a, a wonderful woman, and a wonderful marriage, and a wonderful love story. Okay, and uh, they showed Jimmy Carter at the at the funeral, and come on, the guy the guy is just shy of a hundred. Okay, so the fact that you go, hey, he isn't looking too good, is he? Well, no, he happens to be almost a hundred, and if I live to be that, you're going to look at me and go, what is that horrible thing on my on my computer? Get it off, you know. So anyway. And then, and this 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 grieved me because you know, uh, you hear about. Uh, I often said the trouble with living to be my age is you hear about all the people that are dying, 
and they're people that uh, you, uh, um, you know, you either grew up with or you heard about or whatever, and then you hear they're dying. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm losing a lot of people who are contemporaries, people that I knew, like my friend Shecky. I mean, well, he died much younger than he should have. He was 67 at the time. And uh, it was wrong. It was terrible. And, uh, you know, then you hear about this musician or that musician. Well, today I got news that a guy who worked with me on Midnight Blue and uh, uh, also was uh, used to hang around with me in the radio station. And uh, I think I used him as a producer at one time, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, my memory goes blotto. But I really like the guy, and I didn't see him enough. And you know, as you as you go out and you separate, and you he I, he left Midnight Blue, and I left Midnight Blue, and I went to California, and he moved to New Jersey, and it's one thing or another, you know, and and you lose track of each other, and then occasionally you'll get track of each other. We it's usually when some friend you know died. Remember John Rockwell who used to call this program. Um, uh, he died, and then that's when I saw David again, you know. And then we said, we, we got to get together. This has been far too long. We should get together. And um, we never did, you know. But I just found out today that he died about a week ago. And uh, I, I don't know how old he was. I think maybe he was into his 70s, but I'm not quite sure. I think he could, be in his, could have been in his late uh, 60s. And he died of undiagnosed cancer. In other words, he hadn't been feeling well for a couple of weeks, and then he just, I guess they found out he had cancer, and that was it, and uh, he died. And it just makes me feel bad, because I like David, and he was a nice guy, and he worked with me for a long time, and he worked on Midnight Blue with me, which everybody, a lot of people were getting paid on that show. I think he was one of the ones that got paid, but it wasn't a lot of money. But they were loyal to me, and I really always appreciated that. And we've lost a lot of people from that show. John Rockwell, I told you about, David Weinstein, my friend Ann, uh, excuse me, David Weinstein and Reinstein, uh, also dead. I mean, a lot of people from that show, Midnight Blue, are dead. And uh, it's, it's kind of depressing. Well, there's only one person waiting to come on here. Only one. Count them one, all right, and I will I will deal with that one. I will I will live with that one. Okay, why not? Hello to our old friend uh, Alan. Hello, Alan. Hello, Alex. You're How the, you doing? You're the week? only one here tonight. They'll, well, there, there might have been more. You're a few minutes late, but they'll be back. No, they won't. No, what do you mean? I'm a couple of minutes late. I, I, usually, if I'm late, there should be people really waiting. Oh. Well, I don't know. They'll be here. No, they won't. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you think I should... I was enjoying the conversation with you and Lori. Yeah, well, of course. <clears throat> it, so it, she's, it, uh, she's an interesting person. Yeah, we're going to do something together. Uh, and it may be that I may go down to one night a week on this show and then on, say, a Wednesday run a, a, a show with her and a couple of other people from the San Francisco show all getting together and bitching about stuff together. Why don't you do that on Tuesday? You don't have anything going on. No, on do Tuesday. it on Wednesday. Oh, on Wednesday? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You know. Well, here comes Tom Yamaguchi. That's good okay. news. We have, we, we, it's very rare that Tom is here. And when he is here, we take it as a mitzvah, as they call it in the Jewish religion. Hello there. Okay, now there are two. Now there are two. Yeah, oh, yes. I thought two. you meant. Right, <laughs> thought you mentioned. There was one, and now there's two. Yeah, now there are Actually two. Actually, three, if we include you. Well, yeah. and uh, <laughs> But at this age, I only count for half. So, you know. So. But how are you doing, Tom? I'm doing fine. Yeah, I was just, uh, yeah, I, I got the news of uh, Kissinger's death uh, from the New York Times, and I was uh, cr looking at the. Uh, obituary they they posted and uh, it actually has an interesting picture of a group of Quakers uh, having a meeting for worship and uh, actually getting to meet with Kissinger in, in 1969. Mm -hmm. 
both thought that was amusing. Yeah. Did you have any love for him? No. No. Neither. Neither. No, actually, I loved your 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 uh, your story. Oh yeah. About being at the theater. Well, I was in a theater. It was the show was. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Dudley Moore. Dudley Moore and uh, and uh, his partner um, Peter Cook. Okay. And Dudley Moore, and uh, he went to see it. A great show, great comedy show, you know. And after it was all over, they came out and they took a bow, and then they said, "Is there a doctor in the house?" Mm. And everybody laughed because everybody knew that in the audience was Henry Kissinger. Uh, I I didn't realize it really. I just but then he said, "Would you stand up, Doctor Kissinger?" And he stands up, and everybody starts applauding him, and he's right in front of me. You know, like I'm in this seat and he's in this seat, so I started booing. <laughs> well, you know, my theory was this was a guy who was, uh, a, a, among other things, keeping the Vietnam War going, mm -hmm. killing. Yeah which killed lots of American troops and yep. men, you know. And uh, it bothered me. It bothered me a great deal that he could go anywhere and not have somebody at least say, you're a piece of shit, basically, mm -hmm. you know, for what you've done. He shouldn't go have a free pass wherever he goes to suddenly get, you know, uh, announced, and then everybody cheers him. So I'd be the only guy you know, at a at a Trump rally to boo Trump when he came on, you know. But what happened was I booed him, and then some, uh, a couple of people jumped me yeah, and tackled me to the floor like I was going to hurt Kissinger. No, I was just making a comment because I didn't feel he should go somewhere and not know that there were people there who didn't agree with his policies, you know. So that's my Henry Kissinger story. Well, anyway, if it was a Trump rally, they they beat the crap oh, out Oh, they beat the crap out. I'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> Trump would say kill him, and they would. Yeah. yeah, Trump saved my life. How'd he save your life? He said, go easier on him. You know, <laughs> but anyway. Maybe so. I could uh, just go ahead and quickly put in a plug for some Quaker friends of mine that made a documentary that came out on uh, PBS last year uh, called the, uh, the, the Movement and the Mad Man. That uh, was actually it's about the the Vietnam for, uh, uh, moratorium in uh, 1969, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and the bad man being referenced to uh, to Nixon, yeah, who had and this is from a theory from Dad Daniel Ellsberg was that uh, Nixon wanted to the Russians to believe that he was crazy enough to start a nuclear war over uh, over Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And basically, under Ellsberg's theory, basically the anti-war movement probably prevented a, 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 a nuclear war. So, yeah. anyway, it's a great, great uh, documentary. It's called The Movement of the Mad Man, if you get a chance to see it. Yeah. You, uh, one thing I've always liked about you, and I always, uh, stands out to me, is that you, you are a Quaker, right? Well, I grew up a Roman Catholic. <laughs> well, yeah, but you became a Quaker. But I became a Quaker, yeah. Yeah. About that, about that time, about 1969, over the Vietnam War. So yeah. yeah, and I've always appreciated Quakers because of their stance, you know, and their peacefulness, and yeah. and how they try to in, in, in embody that and make an impression about it on the rest of the world, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I I've gotten to the point where I just don't understand our whole nasty attitude in this world. You know, why do people kill each other? Why? Why do they yeah. go to wars? And, you know, killing, when I say kill, I'm saying, um, yeah, some people are just killers. They go out and they kill a couple of people or they do a little mass shooting or things like little mass shooting, a mass shooting. But when you talk about something like what's going on in Gaza right now and, and going on in Israel, you just go, Why? You know, don't you know? Don't people understand that people want to live? People don't want to die, you know. And and people want to have families and take care of their kids and so on. And they don't need all this misery in their world. 
And think about the misery that's been heaped on the Palestinians. And think about the misery that's been heaped upon, I guess, uh, the Israelis uh, to a lesser extent, oddly enough. You know, in the beginning, it wasn't to a lesser extent, and everybody was sympathetic towards Israel and all oh, that's terrible, what Hamas did to the Jews. But I'm telling you, Netanyahu turned that whole thing around, and now the world is with the Palestinians. You know, not I just our, remembered not something. Not our president, though. Yeah, what, I, our I just president re- is still with the, with no, Israel. No, he's he's taking a stance now to that they better shape up or they don't get the money. Okay. Yeah. See. Yeah. 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 Anyway, just say that I just remembered something. You know, you're talking about Rosalind Carter uh, at her uh, her funeral yesterday. Do you know that they actually sang "Imagine" at her funeral? Really. Yeah, there were, I, there was. She was friends with some country music stars. One of them was Garth Brooks, whose name yes. I recognize. And there was this woman I don't recognize. And Trisha, her name. Trisha Yearwood, I think. Well, anyway, she sang "Imagine." Wow. It was on the news. I go, <laughs> like, what's you know, you know, two Southern Baptists. <laughs> I can't, you can't. And at the funeral, they have the, the most anti-religion song you can imagine. Well, it's called uh, "Imagine." Well, I don't know that. Is it anti-religious? Yeah, and no religion too. Oh, no I mean, religion it's, too. It's, it's, yeah. it's very yeah. anti-religion. I've, imagine, I've, no, imagine no God, no, no, no heaven above us, no only earth below or something like that. Well, you know, you know, like, I, I'm one of these people, and I kind of have uh, it, it, it felt this uh, that that really religion has been the bane of our existence for the most part. I mean, religion has caused more deaths in this world and more more prejudice and stuff like that. I mean, it's horrible. It's just horrible. Not that maybe there aren't some good religions, like the Quakers, who are peaceful and... and the Mennonites. Yes, yeah. so Mennonites. Uh, you know, I up to a point, I often believe that, at least as a Jew, that we were... A peaceful people that we were people yeah. who you know and always felt sorry for the downtrodden of the world and always went to bat for them until of course this thing in the last couple of weeks and now of course I can't prove that to anybody you know but uh, it's just that I just don't understand this world I just don't it makes no sense to me at all and, the, and uh, as I get older, it gets even more distressing. And I don't know why. I should just go, hey, I've only got a couple of years left. I'll just enjoy them and screw everybody. They can deal with their own problems. But it, it's just, I, I, I go, you know, this isn't what I signed up for. You know, times were terrible when I was growing up. You know, we had things like the McCarthy hearings, and you had things like the House on American Activities Subcommittee, which gutted Hollywood and the broadcast industry and um, there was a little publication called Red Channels which told you what people you shouldn't hire because they're probably communists and it was a terrible time I don't think it was as terrible as this you know because we have all that in spades so anyway thanks to the internet yeah. What do you mean? We know more. We know more about it now than we did when when news hit when you were younger. Well, it, it you could say more news spreads faster, okay. but uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think more wrong news spreads faster than it used to. There was never that. a place where we could have this kind of gross. Uh, disregard for the truth and yet all you got to do is have somebody who's got a computer and he can get online go on a social media thing and spread lies that's it plain and simple and because people don't can't distinguish between what is news I guess because the news isn't as newsy as it used to be Um, uh, people it's I don't know it's just kind of strange to me um, I don't understand it. it, it it's dri- dri- driven me crazy. Now, wait a minute. I got something for you here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, you know, Bro- uh, Kevin came on mm-hmm. while you were talking. Yeah. Hi, Kevin. Yeah, I know. Hi, Tony. Wow. That's up. Tony, yeah. 
Um, how many here have a lousy opinion of uh, Elon Musk? <laughs> okay. All right. See, I mean, I have a certain a positive feeling for him where the space stuff is concerned, but where the rest of them is concerned, I find him to be a piece of crap. But are you ready for this? Did you see, hear this news? What do you do now? I'm afraid to ask you. What do you do? Elon Musk told advertisers who suspended ad buys on his social media platform X to go fuck yourself. <laughs> Marking a heated, a heated development in the ongoing fallout from an anti-Semitic tweet he endorsed earlier in the month. Now, get this. A tech mogul and ex-owner also apologized for said authentic tweet during a New York Times deal book summit, saying he handed a loaded gun to those who hate me and arguably to those who are anti-Semitic. For that, I am quite sorry, and it was not my intention. How do you take... How do you always damage control, isn't it? Yeah, would, I mean, I don't well, believe it. You think it's damage control, or do you think... It, you know, he just came back from Israel. Yeah, the the, the, the business the business yeah. news said that all the people that left, all the, the big corporations that left on X or whatever it's called yeah. nowadays is going to cost that company about $500 billion a year in advertisement. Somebody pointed out to them, you might want to kiss a little ass to get some of that back. I would question that amount of $500 billion. Whatever the amount is, it doesn't. It really doesn't matter. Well, what matters is that he needs that business to keep X. It was a lot of money. Well, he has changed X into a subscription model where it's getting to the point where you're going to have to subscribe to be able to post on X. That's and okay. if yeah, he, he it, turned X into a shit show. Well, <laughs> but if he, if, if he does that, if he does that, he doesn't need the advertisers. You get me? In other words, uh, I like the fact you know that he he that he told them they can go fuck themselves. I think that's very good. Anytime you can tell an advertiser to go fuck themselves, yeah, I'm yeah. all for that. You know, uh, but I think he um, I think he did it because he just doesn't give a damn. I don't think it was a damn if he loses X or Twit Tweet or Twitter or whatever you call it now. You know, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, he went on to say, um, although he did apologize for calling anti-Semitic conspiracy theory the actual truth, Musk doubled down saying that he subsequently clarified in replies, but those clarifications were ignored by the media. How do you feel about that? It's probably true. Yeah. I just, I haven't heard of anything about no, any I haven't replies. No, I haven't either. Uh, my feeling is is that I wish Musk would shut the fuck up. And the reason I would wish he did that is the good he is doing on two fronts, one of which is his space program, SpaceX, which is doing remarkable work. I mean, they're, they're sending, right now they're working on sending up the largest spaceship that has ever been built and could, in the end, send a hundred people at a time to Mars. Okay, that's how big this thing is. Start with the Republican Party. What does that have to do with what I'm talking about? <laughs> he always does that's what I noticed. You, know, you always do that and it makes no <laughs> sense at all. Like, and you know sure it does. If you're gonna send a hundred at a time, let the oh, send the Republicans to Mars. Why? I want to go to Mars. Because you you're not a Republican and neither am I. How many here? Would, like how many here? If you had a chance to go to Mars, would go to Mars? I can't take rides. I could never go up the other. <laughs> I can't there. take rides. I can't, have, I, I can't do anything like that. I get sick. Yeah, I, 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 I really don't do. Like I have heights. a bad stomach. Like I don't that. like heights. You would so do it, do Tom. It yeah. yeah, yeah, I would too. Sure. I'd be there. Yeah. I'd be the. Be brave, it, it, yeah. If he said the line, the through. line starts right here. I would like push everybody out of the way and get to the. Yeah, bud. <laughs> Give me a double check. Mine too. I get nervous when I go on a plane, but then I get I get better. What, 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 they have yeah. pills for that, Tony. It's called Valium. yeah. Which once I take off, I'm okay. Then then I start reading. Well, something. to begin with, space travel is entirely different than airplane. I know. I can travel. only imagine how it, I'm watching. I'm thinking of just not beyond, but I couldn't take it. 
I wonder what you feel, Alex. Do you think you feel a lot of pressure in there? It has to be like when you. What do you mean? Like in this in the rocket ship, I wonder how you feel inside there. Like, what, is it congested where you know there's not much space? Well, I wonder it, how de- it depends on what they do with the spaceship. If they create a gravitational uh, system, then it, it will be kind of normal, but you mm-hmm. won't feel. But basically, it, it, it's probably more less impactful than flying in an airplane. Is okay. an airplane, you know, you're being hurled through space in a uh, aluminum tube. But when you see that, then you ever see that when I do the YouTube search for the, the takeoffs, mm-hmm. that the way it's firing off the ground, you got to feel oh, I would something. Lo- of course you feel. A pre- lot of G-forces. You feel G-forces. So God, what are they doing? Believe, believe me, you're going to feel those G-forces for a couple of minutes, and then all of a sudden you're going to go, why yeah. am I floating? You know, so I always I'm, wonder if the astronauts were knocked out, like, or they give them a sedative or something. I wonder. No, why? No, no they don't. I, nothing. Why? No, they have to do. They have to operate. <laughs> well, if I were, if I were an astronaut, yeah. I bet, I bet Tom will agree with me with this. If I were going up there, I wouldn't want a sedative. I'd want to enjoy. Every, brave. I would, I would, not, I would want to enjoy every moment of it. I just including, the, including the explosion, if it happens. We're crazy, right, Tom? Not. Right, Tom? We're crazy, <laughs> huh? Right. Yeah. People think yes. we're nuts when we say that, you know. But I, I just, it's just terrific, you know. I mean, it sounds exciting. I'll tell you that. Wow. It well, definitely sounds both. exciting. It's just not for me. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I, no, the I, the only thing off. that would bother yeah. me is, that, well, it, they have cut down the, they think they're going to be able to cut down the amount of time it takes to get to Mars. Mars. Mm. It used to say, people used to say it would take about two years. But now they say it's about seven months. Huh. And because what they do is they wait for Mars to come. You can only take off in once every two years to get Mars just in the right uh, distance from us to make it the shortest trip possible. Huh. And uh, supposedly they can do it in about seven months. And they say well, if they get these new rockets and stuff, even faster. But even that, I don't know if I want to be on a small ship with a hundred people for like, you know, seven months, you know, That's a long time. I don't want to go on a ship with people for seven days. You know, <laughs> you don't so want to go on that cruise, man, but you can say you can get Justin. So, Where are you getting off at? Yeah. <laughs> Next time Mars. Oh, shit. So Kevin, how was your, th- how was your Thanksgiving, Kevin? Oh, it's okay. It was quiet. Hmm? Very yeah. quiet. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 My prime rib came out perfect. Your prime rib, it did, really. I knew I should have come to your house. Perfect. Yeah. I'd rather had uh, eaten it at home than at a restaurant. Oh, uh, were you ate at home or you ate at the restaurant? <laughs> no, I said I would have rather eaten it at home than at a restaurant because oh, it yeah. came out so good. Oh, cause it, but you, you you cooked it at home. Yeah, and I you smoked. Ate it I home. smoked it. Yeah, oh, I smoked boy. it on the smoker. Oh boy. Yeah, we ordered out. out for turkey. We oh, you got you ordered turkey? Okay. No, we ordered a turkey. Oh, nice. Uh, from from uh, who is it? Uh, Fresh Direct. Okay. And they cook about half of it, and then you cook the other half. Okay. And it's That's okay, cool. you know. It's kind of an institutional Little turkey. Tough. Yeah, we did our turkey. Yeah, it's kind of like an institutional turkey, but Marjorie has decided. I guess she's gotten too old. She's this is the last time she's going to do Thanksgiving. It was the first time we didn't. It really, you no. didn't. Yeah, it was just you and the. We wife. had no family. You know, everybody was gone. Even my daughter was up in school. Still. It was just you and the wife, right? Yeah, yeah. She yeah. was up there because of the football game. She had to stay up at school. You got a big game Friday. Yeah, yeah. Big game our... Friday. I'm going to big Vegas. Friday. Yeah, I'm going to Vegas for the championship. You going to see the game? Yep. Oh, that's gonna be nice. Alex, you, you and you, you, you guys missed uh, our our lunch on Friday. So uh, I didn't hear anything yeah. about it. You guys, oh, yeah. so uh, the what's picture, the deal? Alex, I'll yeah, tell you something. I'll tell you something. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, pi- I'm pissed. I'm fi- pissed at Phil. Yeah. Why? What happened now? Well, I'm pissed at him because he, you know, he sends me this picture of him having lunch, right, with, with uh, Doofus <laughs> over here, and uh, then Brian and and, and uh, what's her name, uh, Adrian. Adrian. Yeah. And uh, then uh, also Steve who Fox. is who uh, Steve Fox and and right. himself, 
and I felt it was kind of trying to make me feel bad. I don't think he was uh, trying. To I do. All. I absolutely do. Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like bragging. Look how I uh, uh, what, what, uh, appropriated your panelists to come have lunch <laughs> with me. You know, here's the here's the good thing that I, maybe maybe hey, you don't see, <laughs> but I see is all those people are there and know each other because of you. Well, that's fine, but the reason Phil sent me the picture was to make me feel bad. I don't, yeah, I don't, th I don't believe that. So. Yeah, well, we know yeah. Phil. Yeah, Kevin was the only one from the Bay Area that wasn't there. I was surprised. In fact, we don't even have Kevin here. He didn't call on Monday either. I don't know where. Uh, not Kevin, but uh, Brian. You know, was, but anyway, I was so. going to call on Monday, but I, I forgot. I, by the oh, I know what I was doing. You, dealing you, with well, a, people do have lives. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was that. dealing with an issue. I was home. <laughs> That's <so uncommon. laughs> uh, But By the time I got done with my... I mean, if I did the same lunch issue. here in New York, okay, basically, ba basically it would be Tony. <laughs> oh, I'd be happy to get out to myself. <laughs> Yeah, but that's not a picture you'd want to take. Here I come. Yeah. <laughs> he never stops talking. That's what Jackie would say. Yeah. Tell me another story. What? Yeah. Get out of here already. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but anyway, so I, I just, I, 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 I didn't feel, I just didn't feel good about that picture. It didn't make me feel good. Oh. I, I, because I felt it was, there was some, how can I put it, <laughs> ulterior motive that Phil had in yeah, that that. I, I don't I don't feel that with like him. I I don't know, but I, I think, think I don't he, think so. he told me that you weren't happy about it. And I said, Why? It's just a picture of some people that he knows eating dinner on the West Coast. What's the big deal? Or lunch, I guess. What's the big deal? Be it wasn't yeah. like we were having champagne and caviar or something. Oh. Did you have turkey or no? No, it was uh, in a Italian it was, restaurant, it was, I think. No, it was, it was the, Piotti. Tony, it was the day after Thanksgiving. It was Friday lunch, and we did oh. it in Danville, which is up by where Phil lives. And we went to a, a nice restaurant. It was, you know, it was just a get-together. It send, was a halfway I'll point. <laughs> From what I could tell, it was a halfway point, right? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, half. It was 10 miles to Phil's house and, and 25 miles from my house. So. Well, then that isn't halfway. But yeah, but, but Steve lives in Danville, where the restaurant was. Brian had the farthest to go; he had to go all the way from San Jose. So, mm. yeah. but he was up there to go to Walnut Creek afterwards to look at a newer McLaren to buy. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if he bought it or not, but you know, you know what? I've never understood. You know, he's he's kind of in a Silicon Valley business. All right, yeah, okay. Yes, he isn't in computers, but he's in biotech okay that's right um is that i never understood because i i used to hang out with those people a lot you know i was in fact working for one of those companies they love their sports cars they love well, they their do cars i mean so that's what uh, money every I company i ever knew like uh new tech and uh and uh, uh and so on um um, um were all companies where the people who owned the companies bought like two hundred and fifty thousand oh, dollar cars. So they don't want to they just love those cars. And and he's a good example of that. He, he's a car enthusiast and he yeah. wanted to love it. But I don't know that. why tech people especially love cars. I wonder what that is in you think because you I don't is, know. I, mean, I, I bet if you go, if you go over to Apple and you go yeah. look at their garage, I'll bet you see the nothing but, but high price sports cars. I'll uh, bet you. Yeah, I'll bet there's a lot of Teslas and a lot of Priuses. Oh, yeah, because I, yeah, I can see them having electric cars to throw the money in, yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know, you I think? don't know. Well, was it more like a Corvette or a Ferrari, stuff like that? Well, or? you know, uh, uh, this is. Well, his McLaren's more like a Ferrari than a Corvette. Oh, really? Brian. Much, higher, much, yeah. much higher price. He opened the door to the damn thing, and you would have needed a crane to get me out of the seat. Is it low to the ground there, Alan? Or? Very low. I would say yeah, it looked like it was about six inches off the ground. It's oh, very okay. low. I would have never, as fat as I am, been able to get in and out of it. Um, I'm trying to remember what the company was, but my friend was given a $250,000 sports car by his partner in this company 
that they had right. together. Uh, nice because I guess he didn't want it anymore. <laughs> you can have it. You know, and <laughs> it was a, it was a what, what name a couple of big names in sports cars. Uh, Ferrari, Ferrari. Was it, no, wasn't a Ferrari. Ferraris Lamborghini. are Porsche? Lamborghini. It was a Lamborghini well, every, Diablo. <laughs> Does that sound right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. And he had this Lamborghini mm -hmm. Diablo, and he said, "I just he just gave it to me." He said, "Why don't we get in it? And we'll drive because he, this was in Sacramento, and we'll drive yeah. up to to Tahoe." Okay, well that must be nice. So that we drove your, up. That to, was your bumpy ride. Was it? It was the worst ride I've ever taken in a car. Really? I mean, it was oh, so bump. hard riding. You know, you felt every bump. Oh, that's gonna you be know, it was not yeah, comfortable. Low, they're low-profile tires, and they're very stiff suspensions on them. Yeah, yeah. and yet you just paid $250,000. It should be the smoothest ride alive. You would think so, it'd be. Like, not on California roads. Well, well, then you can bump, you can buzz around a corner, York, you around a corner right? without hurting anything. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, the idea of a sports car like that is to be able to, drive it, you know, going twist and turn at 100 miles an hour without a problem, you know, it's not made to give you a comfortable I, ride. I, like I, I never, you see, I never, I never was a big car fan, but right. I could afford good cars. Okay. So basically, I mean, I bought one day, I bought a, I remember I had a, uh, uh, I, I bought a uh, Nissan 300ZX. Mm, that's a nice car. Why? Well, because I could afford right because I well, could afford it. I want a little sports car, a little sports car. Uh, it cost about thirty thousand dollars in those days, which was pretty. Expensive. That's a lot back then, huh? Yeah, and I would drive down the street, and kids would go. Oh, they like the car. And I'm going. I don't understand it. It's just a damn car that I bought because it looked like it'd be kind of interesting and fun to drive around. His McLaren is a, a big step up from the 300ZX. I happen to I happen to like the 300ZX, but his McLaren is a big step up both in looks, performance, and of course in price. Well, I own two cars. The second oh. car I owned was an Acura, a top of the line Acura. But yeah, yeah, they're nice cars. And, they're and, comfortable to ride in. Yeah. Well, you know something? When I want to take a long drive somewhere. Nothing like that Acura, man. Because that's oh, like, it's like you're driving in a living room. No, yeah. You know. Quiet. You don't hear the road. Yeah. Yeah. Nice car. What kind of car are you driving now, Tom? <laughs> I haven't owned a car in decades. I thought you oh, you, oh, you had a what? I have not owned a car in decades. Really? So what, how do you, yeah, how do you lucky get? lucky here in the well, Bay Area. You live, you live, you live. Bicycle. Yeah. And I have public transit. And if I do need a car, I have um, a car share uh, company called Gig. Okay. And I use that car. They're one of their. Uh, yeah. Their yeah. So that's their a the Bay Area. I haven't owned it. I haven't owned a car in. Well, when did I come out here? In about twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. You came out in two thousand three. Yeah. Two thousand three. Yeah. Well, within two thousand, I decided. That I would not own. I, I had a goal. I would not own own a car for the rest of my life, and I've gone what 23, 24 years without. Well, why why did you decide that? I mean, like when I, if I were still living in California, I'd have a car. Right? Imagine California, you know, uh, because well, I didn't have a I didn't have a car when uh, when I was uh, coming to your uh, your program uh, to be a part of your studio audience in San Francisco. Yeah, I took my bicycle on Bart, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was up, including when you were at the Quake. Yeah, remember on the on Sutter Street mm -hmm. in Can S. Mm -hmm. So I would take, I ride my bicycle to the Bart station, catch the first San Francisco train uh, coming over, got off uh, downtown San Francisco, rode my bike as fast as I could up to up uh, Sutter Street. And uh, when I got there, it was usually around the first or second uh, record that was playing after Joe Rogelski did the news. And that's uh, about the time I got there in, too. We would be coming in just about the time that, uh, <laughs> or you'd be there just just before I arrived. Yeah, 
Yeah. So I'd be among the first people. That was on Friday mornings because that was my day off was Friday. So that's when I would come to be a part of the studio audience at, at the Quake. Yeah, well, I would, I would, I, when I go to work, I would just drive my car, I'd leave the house at about six o'clock. Now, the show started at six o'clock, but I knew it was like a 10 minute ride that mm -hmm. time of the morning because there was no traffic. And I'd go through Chinatown and occasionally have to uh, uh, swipe some Chinese people off my hood with my windshield wipers, you know. But I, I got to the station. I would, I would phone them and say, play another record, <laughs> you know, if I was going too slow. Those people like you, Alex, that made people like Tom not want to drive. Well, you know, so then I would get there. I would get there about 10 after, maybe 15 after, and then I'd start the show. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. You've been in the Bay Area your whole life, Tom? No, no. I moved up here from, um, well, I actually was born in, in New Jersey. Yeah, you were saying that. Out Thursday. Out Jersey again, Tom. And then uh, my family moved out to uh, San Diego when I was a teenager. Actually, it's right after the Kennedy assassination <laughs> that we came out to San Diego. And I lived there for a while and decided I was sick of San Diego. We moved up to the Bay Area. We had a friend up here in Berkeley. We moved in with him. Eventually, we got together and bought a house. And so I've been in this house since uh, 1981. Really? Mm -hmm. You live right down the street from me. Well, I live in you live Fremont. Berkeley? Well, that, okay. No, I live in Fremont. You live. Fremont. You live right, he lives down right down the street. The street. <laughs> he lives right down the street from uh, me. It, Good it, time it, for you to move, Tom. <laughs> no, shit. no, that's not down the street. <laughs> I'm about thirty miles. That's like down that. the highway. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I just don't know if I know how to drive anymore. I just, yeah, it's been so long since I've been behind. It's been about five years. You can drive. My mother's 90. She drives. But, really? But, but not I, at night. I, not at night and not on the freeway. But, I'm, but I, I'm got, I've gotten clumsy, and so I'm afraid to drive. She's you clumsy, know? too. She runs into the curb all the time. Oh, well, well, fine. That's good. Thank you. Giving me a lot of encouragement there. Yeah. I, I wanted to get her a bumper sticker that said, if you don't like the way I drive, stay off of the side." Tony, you own a car, don't you? Uh, well, actually, I well, technically by default, me and my brother have my dad's car, and my brother has his own car, so we use both. We use my dad's car. How long has your dad been it. gone? My dad's gone four years now. Okay, so and this and my mom's too. Yeah. So how old is his car? I would say the car is maybe twelve years old, but there's not many miles on it. He only went around locally. The best, the best, the best like situation new, really. of all was Shecky. Who had yes. a, his mother had a car. He saw my dad's car one time. Huh? He he came over to my house and he met my dad. I'll never forget. They were talking movies briefly before he went to see a show. Yeah. And my father told him, Don't don't talk his ears off. He was just, uh, but my dad's car was like his mom's car, but it was like more newer. There was no miles on it. Well what but can I tell my story? Oh, yeah, again, I got yeah, a little excited. Yeah, just, Sorry. But anyway, yeah. he um uh, uh he he used his mother's car. And he never got rid of it. And that car, yeah. But when he died, was twenty five years old, in great shape except for missing a door. It only had something yeah, like fifty thousand miles on it because he only yeah. drove it around the block. You know, uh, yes, maybe yeah. ride it out to uh, Costco to get Costco. food. You know, uh, or out to Stu Leonard's or whatever. Uh, and that was it. You know, wow. so. But me, on the other hand, when I had a car in California, I, I put 50,000 miles a year on it, Seventy. I could see you, like, driving. like So you would go up to the, you would, like, on the weekend, you'd just take the car and go then, like, for a while. I just, I just, I, just I, I like driving. I really like driving. It was the most comforting thing I could do. I mean, uh, I don't know how many here, how many here really like driving, you know? Yeah, I drove just, shortly, I so it, I, I didn't like driving in New York because it was almost so when I was driving. It was because uh, it was so much traffic here. My brother likes driving outside in New York, upstate. Have you had when coffee tonight? It. Yeah, I did, Alex. <laughs> I'm watching I didn't the send it to him. I actually, I'm on my Maxwell house now. Not yeah. my fault. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Well, you know, I have coffee too, but oh yeah. yeah. Do you drink a whole cup of it here? I mean, how many cups have you had tonight? 
Oh, tonight I watched uh, Miracle on 34th Street. Then I went to Sons of Anarchy. How many cups of coffee? Oh, this is exactly. This is my fourth cup. Didn't ask you what movie you watched. Fourth fourth cup. (laughs) Fourth cup in the past hour. I was on automatic pilot. Yeah. (laughs) My brother went out to dinner, so I had the whole house to myself. So I was just watching. Really, really. Okay. It's time for a fifth cup. I have a little bit left, actually. (laughs) Yeah. Time for a fifth cup. Yes, I made six cups, a half a pot, Alex. But I'm sitting here. Why don't do this? Do yourself a favor. This way, you won't drink as much coffee. Get like, yourself, yeah. get yourself a Keurig, and if I have one too now. It does both. Yeah, I know. Listen, I, listen to him. Are you sure you didn't send him coffee? I, I did. I, I, I sent him good. Tony, good. tell him I haven't sent you coffee in about. He hasn't sent it to me in like two weeks, but that was excellent. But yeah, I was but breaking two weeks. Out the game. Two weeks. About two weeks, yeah. Three I weeks saved that for occasions. It was flavored coffee, Alex. So I said, like I made flavor? his coffee, Alex, on Sundays during the football games. So I'll do this like a special treat. Okay. Uh, you know, you know, uh, okay. Once a month is enough. This is only 10 ounces. I'll be up all night now. I got like movies all over the place. 10 or 12 ounces of coffee. Look at look at the look on, on uh, Kevin's face. <laughs> look, look at the look on his face. He man. got so much stuff <laughs> out. Like, he, 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 I, gotta, I don't know what it is. You know, I always bring a cup of coffee with me to the show uh-huh. uh, because I am, you know, I, I just want to kind of stay awake. It's late at night for me. And then I only drink. I'm down maybe a third of a cup. And then I will take this cup and I will put it in the refrigerator. Oh, so you got your ice coffee then. And tomorrow night, no, tomorrow night I'll put it in the microwave, warm it up. I, I, for a what lot, type lot of coffee of me, do you drink? I'll buy your coffee so you could have a fresh cup every day. Who, me? He said it over. Yeah, I don't want a fresh cup every day. Oh, if okay. I only drink a third... Then why well, should I throw it? Then. Why should I throw it away? Yeah, Tony, let him talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm getting like Phil now. Yeah. No, 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 you're getting like Tony on coffee. Exactly. Oh yeah. God. Exactly. Yeah. I'm all wired. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, calm down. Phil sent him some coffee that has like four times the caffeine. Oh of yeah, that yeah. kept me up. I oh, watched that. the double feature with that coffee. Well, Black think- rifle. Forget it. Okay. I thought I wasn't going to be falling asleep. I watched two movies on that coffee, like three cups. Yeah, I, I, I limited, <laughs> I like I limited to one bag a month. So, oh um, boy, Tony. I know. I'm a big, <laughs> I'm a night owl. <laughs> and for well, that, I, he sends me wallpaper. I got to send you something for your birthday. I got something I'm putting together for you. Send me something that I might want for my birthday. Like That's an what Amazon, I'm trying to do. I like an Amazon gift card. The two of them. This is off. this is like a like a thing here with the two of them. Yeah, you're right. We're having our private call. I'm sorry, guys. That's very rude. Yeah. Yeah. And Joy, do it. Why don't you ho- just host the rest of the show? It's got. <laughs> yeah, we're just talking. It's like got seven one. minutes left. I was going to ask you something. I forgot oh. what I was going to ask you now, Alex. Something was on my mind. Well, why don't you ask me something and not ask me something? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? Secchi sent me a note of that when I first did that. I saved it. Let me ask you a question, Alex. He wrote it on the CBS thing. I was laughing. <laughs> well, what you call it? <sighs> Shit, I forgot what I was going to say now. You're giving me a headache. You yeah. know that. Oh, you know what it was? <laughs> I was watching an old thing. Do you remember Peter Lawford? Was he an actor? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Because I watched a special on Jimmy Dean he did with Natalie Wood. They were talking about it. It was like 20 years later or so of his death. No, he was really a plumber, Tony. I didn't know he was. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was a talk show host. I didn't Google him yet, though. I said, what? Peter Lawford was a talk show host, you thought? I, that's what I thought he was, because when he was doing the show, he was like hosting it, and they were talking to him about his career. So He was an actor. Was he any good? I was just curious. No, he wasn't any good. No. He was Jack Kennedy's uh, brother in law. Yes, he yeah. was. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, although, didn't his wife divorce him? Uh, I think they yeah, got I divorced. So. At some I don't point. know. I, I <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was part of the Rat Pack. Yes, he was part of the Rat Pack. Really? Uh, TV version of The Thin Man. You're absolutely correct. Have a couple more cups of coffee and Google them after the show. Yeah, I just I watched four earlier. Four. Well, they also was, did. A, you know what else he did before he did? Uh, uh, what did you say he did? He on TV. The thin man. Thin, he did the thin man. He did the thin man. Oh, thin man. Yeah. 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 What yeah. else? What you say he did something before? Well, well, there's one other show you said he did. No, I did. Oh, that's, the thin man. Okay. That, that was. was I think man. that was his first show. Yeah, oh. 
Yeah. So anyway. But no, he no, wasn't, wasn't. He wasn't a TV host. He wasn't a good actor. See, what he was doing, I said, "Well, this guy looks like a TV host and stuff." He, because he was the way he was talking to me. I said, mm. uh, "They were just talking oh, about okay. his." Yeah, you promised not to talk for the rest of the show. Yeah, I'll be quiet now. I got my Natalie Wood and Jimmy D now. Sorry. Just so we could get a word in edgewise. <laughs> like br Kevin has something important to tell all of us, don't you, Kevin? No. <laughs> <laughs> if I did, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but uh, it's nice of you to call, Tony. We appreciate. Don't say anything. We appreciate. Was invited it. to call. Huh? I mean, it was just you and me. I and, and Tom. I said, why don't you? I sent him a text. Oh, I see. Why don't you call? There's well, only I, a couple I, of I us, thank you, know? you for that. I really Not do. Sure. You can go to hell. Anyway. He's right. You should listen now. <laughs> yeah. So we got about three minutes left. I'm trying to think if there was anything else major in the news that was going on. Um, is there anything in the news that you're thinking about, Tom? Did, did you they see like that? The tree. It's Shut up, Tony, for a minute. God damn it. <laughs> Did you see that Melania Trump showed up to her her uh, to to? Uh, yeah, that was very nice. Yeah, she was that was nice, and it was nice of her to leave Donald at home. <laughs> well, no, she was. Well, that was that was the invitation. The Rosalie Carter invited all the I, I former first ladies, including Melania Trump. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I know that. And I, I and quite frankly, I think I have no. Anybody here have anything against Melania? No. Outside. Yes, I do. But well. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't. Oh, oh yeah. Well, one. Yeah, she was a big birther. Oh, yeah. Is she oh, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Really? I didn't know that. Oh yeah. She's married to Donald, so that. Yeah, really... she supported. She supported her. Really. Trump's uh, birther theories and all. Oh yeah. really? Oh yeah. Well, because I always thought I, 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 I always thought that she just kind of went along with Donald, uh, because you know, that's He's where the bread was him. buttered. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, they probably hate him. Huh? I bet you the ex-wife hate him. Maybe Ivanka liked him, you think, or I'm not? Well, I'm wondering how the other... Did you? Did anybody notice how the others seemed to be treating her? I guess they were treating her okay, right? That right next to Michelle. Still, I always saw the still pictures from the, from the theater. I didn't see any video. Well, the decent thing about somebody like Michelle is she's very forgiving and very decent. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so she would not... Especially there, that's not the place to bring politics into the room. Right. No. You know? uh, and uh, but I just thought I uh, what happened what, when she died. I felt bad because that was one of the great love stories. You know, I mean, we should in our lives have that successful a relationship with somebody that lasts that long. Uh, I can't remember how many years they were married. Seventy nine. Yeah, some amazing. Seventy two, I thought. Seventy two. Seventy seven. One of the two. Yeah, I mean, and and they were just, a, you know, they were a team. And she had the greatest quote that I ever remember any first lady having. Somebody asked her, "Have you been born again?" And her reply was, "No, I got it right the first time." <laughs> And I, I believe that she actually felt that, you know, they were, they were, they were a great uh, couple, and they were great. Yeah, she people. planned that whole, she planned that whole thing herself. But the that whole funeral, yeah, yeah, she yeah. planned the whole thing. Yeah, I hope Trump's. She invited hope, Garth and Trisha to sing that song and everything. I hope. Yeah, I was saying earlier, they sang a magic. I hope yeah, Trump is. I'm hope Trump, he asked them to do that. She asked them to do that. She asked. She actually requested them to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, listen, I'm playing the theme right now, which none of you can hear, but that's only because I'm selfish. Uh, anyway, it's been a very nice little hour. I mean, you know, nobody much called. We didn't have a large crowd here. But, uh, you know, it gets less. If it dwindles down to nothing, then I will be able to stop doing this thing. Uh, but uh, when it's people as nice as you, and all we're missing tonight, I wish we're here, was, uh, was, is Brian, uh, because I always enjoy his participation. But, uh, you know, that's it for tonight. I thank you um, uh, very much, uh, uh, Alan, for being here tonight. Tom, it's always a pleasure when you're here, you know? 
It's like the old days. In fact, I was looking at a picture of my installation into the Hall of Fame, the Broadcast Hall of Fame in San Francisco. And there's you and me. And I think Albert was in the picture and a couple other people. And uh, you, you came to that, and I really appreciate yeah. it. And you probably bicycled there. I, I rode my bicycle over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin. I appreciate it. And Tony, shut up. Fuck up, will you please, Tony? See you tomorrow night. Everybody, give well, yeah, please. Give everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. That's our citizen panel for tonight, folks. There they go. Uh, Jack Bishop is next over most of this same uh, gabnet. He's going to be here with the uh, with the uh, um, uh, intersection, uh, and uh, he'll be taking your calls on Skype at Gabnet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.